In this video, I will discuss the parietal bone in detail. Parietal bones are paired cranial bones. In this model, this green is one parietal bone and this is the other parietal bone. Let's isolate one parietal bone. This is isolated parietal bone with the interior view. Now with the lateral view, you can see that it is the flat arc bone. Both parietal bones form a major part of the skull covering the brain, as you can see. Individual parietal bone is quadrilateral in shape. It has two surfaces, the outer surface and the inner surface. It has four borders, that is the superior border, the inferior border, the interior border and the posterior border. And it also has four angles, the interior superior angle, the interior inferior angle, the posterior superior angle and the posterior inferior angle. First, we will discuss the side determination of the parietal bone. For the side determination, you have to remember three main points. First is that the outer surface is convex in nature and it should be on outside. The second point is that this is the superior border. It is the longest of all the borders and it should be on the medial side. Third point is related to the angle. This is the interior inferior angle. Compared with the other angles, it is a prolonged angle. Or in simple word, this angle seems like it is stretched out. So the interior inferior angle is prolonged and it should be on the interior and the inferior side. So if we look from the superior view, then it is clear that it is the right parietal bone. Now looking at the left parietal bone, Making the superior border on the medial side. The outer surface which is convex is outward and the prolonged interior inferior angle is on the interior and inferior side. So this is the left parietal bone. We will begin our discussion with the surfaces. First one is the outer surface. As you can see it is smooth and convex shape surface. Now in the outer surface there are three main structure that you should remember. The parietal tuber, the two arc lines and number three, the parietal foramen. First one is the parietal tuber. This part of the outer surface has maximum convexity and is called the parietal tuber. The distance between the parietal tubers of the parietal bones is the maximum transverse diameter and is called the interparietal diameter. In child, the parietal tuber is the point from where the ossification began and then it spread in all directions. Next is the two arc lines. Below the parietal tuber are present two arc lines. That is the superior temporal line and the inferior temporal line. The convexities of these two lines is facing upward. The area below to the inferior temporal line is the squamous part of the parietal bone. And this squamous part of the parietal bone is the contribution of parietal bone to the temporal fossa. This is the temporal fossa and this is the squamous part of the parietal bone which contribute to the temporal fossa and this squamous part is present below the inferior temporal line. Next is the parietal foramen. The outer surface close to the posterior end of the superior border there is present a foramen called the parietal foramen. Next is the inner surface of the parietal bone. The inner surface is concave in nature. On the inner surface is present five important structures. The vascular marking, the surface irregularities, sagittal sinus, granular pits and part of the sigmoid sulcus. First one is the vascular marking. There are two sets of vascular marking present on the inner surface. These vascular markings are going upward and backward. First one is the interior vascular markings. These are produced by the interior division of middle meningeal vessels, mainly the veins. Second one is the posterior vascular marking. These are produced by the posterior division of the middle meningeal vessels. Just like the interior vascular marking, these are also produced by the veins. Second one is the surface irregularities. The inner surface is not smooth as the outer surface. Instead, it has pits and fault. And these pits and fall are produced by the gyri of the brain. Next is the sagittal sulcus. Close to the superior border on the inner surface 
is present half groove now when both the parietal bones are joined together you will see the sagittal sulcus this sagittal sulcus as you can see half of the groove is contributed by one parietal bone and the other half of the groove is contributed by the other parietal bone and in this sagittal sulcus is present this sagittal sinus next is the granular pits on either side of the sagittal sulcus is present pits these are called the granular pits and are produced by the arachnoid granulations number 5 part of the sigmoid sulcus close to the posterior inferior angle a curved groove is present which is part of the sigmoid sulcus this highlighted blue is the sigmoid sinus and the sigmoid sinus is present in the sigmoid sulcus so if i remove it then you can see that this hole is the sigmoid sulcus and this is the part of the sigmoid sulcus present on the inner surface of the parietal bone now let's move toward the four borders of the parietal bone the first one is the superior border this is the superior border from the anterior superior angle to the posterior superior angle is the superior border the superior border is the longest of all the borders it has serrated margin and through the superior border it is joined with the other parietal bone now when both the parietal bones are joined together then the superior border forms the sagittal suture from the bregma to the lambda is the sagittal suture next is the inferior border from the anterior inferior angle to the posterior inferior angle is the inferior border from anterior to posterior the inferior border is divided into three parts the first part the second part and the third part the anterior most is the first part and it is connected to the tip of the greater wing of sphenoid bone this is the first part of the inferior border and as you can see it is connected to the tip of the greater wing of sphenoid bone the second part is posterior to the first part this hole is the second part of the inferior border and it is connected to the squamous part of the temporal bone the third part is posterior to the second part and this part is connecting the parietal bone to the mastoid part of the temporal bone next is the anterior border this hole is the anterior border it extends from the anterior superior angle to the anterior inferior angle in complete skull model this is the anterior border and the anterior border is connecting the parietal bones to the frontal bone both the anterior border of the parietal bones and the frontal bone together form a suture called the coronal suture the last one is the posterior border this hole is the posterior border extending from the posterior superior angle to the posterior inferior angle in complete skull model this is the posterior border and through this posterior border the parietal bone is attached to the occipital bone and together they form the lamboid suture next is the four angles first one is the anterior superior angle this angle is also called as the frontal angle because it is related to the frontal bone second one is the posterior superior angle and it is also called as the occipital angle because it is related to the occipital bone third one is the anterior inferior angle also called as the sphenoidal angle because it is related to the sphenoid bone and the last one is the posterior inferior angle also called as the mastoid angle because of its relation to the mastoid part of the temporal bone first one is the anterior superior angle also known as the frontal angle this is a 90 degree angle this angle together with the corresponding parietal and the frontal bone at the meeting point of the coronal and the sagittal suture will form the bregma next is the posterior superior angle also called as the occipital angle it is the meeting point of the sagittal suture and the two lamboid suture and it form the lambda third one is the anterior inferior angle also known as the sphenoidal angle 
it is a prolonged angle anteriorly it articulate with the frontal bone inferiorly it articulate with the sphenoid bone and posteriorly it articulate with the temporal bone together these four bone will form an h shaped suture called the trion the last one is the posterior inferior angle this is the posterior inferior angle which is connected inferiorly with the mastoid part of the temporal bone and posteriorly with the occipital bone and this meeting point of the parietal temporal and occipital bone is called asterion that's all about the parietal bone thank you